Good day everyone, I am Ezra Leyes from Group 5 and we are about to report the amazing countries of South America. I will be the first one to report the first country of this continent, Brazil. When it comes to tourism, Brazil needs a little introduction. There is so much to do and see in this largest South American country and the fifth largest in the world. Brazil is famous for so many things that it means something different to different people. For some, Christ the Redeemer is the first image that comes to mind when they think of Brazil. For others, it may be Samba or Carnival. For fans of sport, football comes foremost to mind. And we can forget about Brazil's beautiful beaches and gorgeous people. As we go on to this topic, let me introduce to you the geographic location of Brazil. It is the largest country in South America and the fifth largest nation in the world. It forms an enormous triangle on the eastern side of the continent with a 4,500 mile or 7,400 kilometers coastline along the Atlantic Ocean. It has borders with every South American country except Chile and Ecuador. The population of Brazil is very diverse, comprising many races and ethnic groups. Brazilians trace their origins from three sources, Europeans, Amerindians, and Africans. Historically, Brazil has experienced large degrees of ethnic and racial admixture, assimilation of cultures, and syncretism. Next is we have the demographic location of Brazil. The official name of this country is Federal Republic of Brazil. Its capital is Brasilia. Its population is 215,093,403 based on the United Nations data as of today. The official language is Portuguese. The currency is real. The area is 3,286,470 square miles converted to 8,511,965 square kilometers. Next, what are the required travel documents for travelers coming to Brazil? Number one is health document. Negative COVID-19 PCR test result required for international travelers must be issued within 72 hours before departure. Number two, vaccination document. COVID-19 vaccination proof for travelers coming to Brazil. Last dose must be taken at least 14 days before departure. Number three is passport. Original passport or travel document of Philippines within six months remaining on validity of date of travel. Or have at least two visa clear pages of any markings. Number four is travel itinerary. Embassy recommends not to purchase hotel and flight tickets until visa is approved. So don't waste your money, time, and effort by buying actual tickets. Get past hotel and flight itinerary within minutes for any country visa. Lastly, proof of funds. It is important that you have a proof of enough money for your stay and to leave Brazil. Now, let's talk about the political in Brazil. Jair Messias Bolsonaro, born on March 21, 1955, is a Brazilian politician and retired military officer who has been the 38th president of Brazil since January 1, 2019. He was elected in 2018 as a member of the conservative Social Liberal Party before cutting ties with it. From 1991 to 2018, Bolsonaro served in Brazil's Chamber of Deputies, representing the state of Rio de Janeiro. The country of Brazil is a federal republic. Politically and administratively, the country is comprised of a union, states, a federal district, and municipalities, all of which are autonomous under the Constitution. In Brazil, their religion is Roman Catholic. Brazil's religious landscape is as diverse as its ethnic and geographic diversity. Accordingly, the majority of Brazilians in the country identify as Roman Catholic for 64.4%. This reflecting its historical relationship with Portugal and the Catholic Church. 
As we go on to the exciting part of this topic, let me introduce to you the gastronomy of Brazil. First-time visitors will have their plates full in Brazil, but one thing that shouldn't be overlooked is the food. Thanks to its size, history, and mix of different influences, Brazil is home to one of the most interesting cuisines, not just in the Americas, but in the world. Here are the top two foods that you look for in Brazil. Number one is feijoada. It is a hearty black bean stew recipe made with meat, black beans, garlics, and tomatoes, and it is the national dish of Brazil. Served over rice, it's a filling meal to warm you up on a chilly winter day. Next is we have coxinha. It is a popular street food snack traditionally filled with chicken meat, but they can be made with other ingredients as well like corn, cheese, nuts, peas, mushroom, carrots, and other vegetables. It literally means little Thai and refers to the snack's distinctive teardrop shape. They are meant to resemble chicken drumsticks which, according to legend, can be traced back to Brazilian Princess Isabel's mentally ill son as his favorite dish. Next, we have the customs and tradition of Brazil. Festa Junina or June's party to celebrate the day of Santo Antonio, São João, and São Pedro, Brazilians started a tradition known as the Festa Junina, a party that occurs sometime between June July, or even August. In its typical fashion, everyone dresses as cowboys and cowgirls and dances in a coordinated group choreography known as quadrilla. Next is Festival de Parentins. It is a folklore tradition that takes its roots in the state of Amazonas and is celebrated every June. The whole festivity is based around one old legend about two bulls, a red one called Garantido and a blue one called Caprichoso. Just like during a football match, every Brazilian would choose a color to represent during the festival. The cities also change for the festival and divide themselves in blue and red colors, cheering for the bulls while celebrating with friends and family. In fact, the Parentines Festival is the biggest such festivity in Latin America and is one of the largest folklore celebration in the whole world. Now, let us move on to the last part of this topic, the natural and man-made major attractions found in Brazil. First natural attraction that can be found in Brazil is the Iguazu Falls. These are waterfalls of the Iguazu River on the border of the Argentine province of Misiones and the Brazilian state of Parana. It is also listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This really is one of the world's greatest natural wonders, and if you have the chance to visit, you should do so. Next is the Pantanal. It is a natural region encompassing the world's largest tropical wetland area, and the world's largest flooded grasslands. Like Iguazu, the Pantanal is shared with other two countries, Bolivia and Paraguay, though the majority of it is here in Brazil. Last natural attraction is Fernando de Noronha. It is a volcanic archipelago about 350 kilometers off Brazil's northeast coast. It is also a beautiful and relatively untouched natural attraction, and this is yet another world heritage site. Well, here are the man-made attractions in Brazil. Number one is the Christ the Redeemer. It is one of the most remarkable Brazil landmarks, which also happens to be the biggest and most famous Art Deco statue in the world. Standing at of Corcovado, which means hunchback, Cristo Redentor gazes out over Rio a placid expression on his well-crafted face. Today, it stands at 2,300 feet or 700 meters above sea level. Lastly is the Cathedral of Brasilia. It is the first monument created in the country's capital, Brasilia. Designed by the architect Oscar Niemeyer, both the interior and exterior of the church are considered a work of art. The cathedral is dedicated to Our Lady of Aparecida. That would be all for my report. I hope that you learned something and new ideas about different topics of Brazil. And I also hope that you should also visit Brazil soon. Thank you for listening to my report.
Again, I am Ezra Leyes, the leader of Group 5. Hi guys, I'm Carla Angelicas and today I'm going to introduce to you the Chile. Introduction about Chile. Chile is a country in South America that borders the South Pacific Sea. Neighboring countries include Argentina, Bolivia, and Peru. Chile has a strategic location relative to sea lanes between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, including the Strait of Magellan's Beagle Channel and the Drake Passage. Let's go to the geographic location of Chile. Chile is situated in southern South America, bordering the Pacific. South Pacific Ocean and the small part of South Atlantic Ocean. Chile's territorial shape is among the world's most unusual. Chile occupies a long strip of land in the southwest of the South American continent. The country is shaped like a long and narrow ribbon and it is the longest country in the planet. Its coastline along the Pacific Ocean stretches for 4,300 4, kilometers or 2,700 meter. Officially, the Republic of Chile is a country in western part of South America. It is occupied along narrow strip of land between the Andes to the east and the Pacific Ocean to the west. Chile covers an area of 756,000 square kilometers with a population of 17.5 million as, to, as of 2017. Within its borders, Chile has four distinct geographic zones, the dry northern desert, the fertile the central valley, the forest and lakes of south central Chile, and the archipelagos, fjords, and the channels of the far south. Go to the demographic of Chile. Chile's 2017 census reported a population of 17 million people. Its rate of population growth has been decreasing since 1990 due to a declining birth rate. By 2050, the population is expected to reach approximately 20 million people. The nationality in Chile is Chilean and the lang language there is Spanish. Let's go to the education system in Chile. Chile's education system is structured along the lines of 19th century French and German models and highly regarded among Latin American countries. It is divided into eight years of free and compulsory basic education, four years of op optional secondary or vocational education, and additional years of higher education. Health of population Chile has one of the highest standards of public health care in the world. They are considered a leader in Latin America, setting by the standard of what other countries can achieve. Based on World Health Organization listing of global healthcare system, Chile is ranked 38th third in the world. Here are the required travel documents if you want to go in Chile for Filipino traveler. Number one is valid passport. Number two is issues visas include all visas expired or unexpired. The, the third one is proof of financial capacity bank statements on and or credit card statements fourth is proof of travel fifth is fifth is the most important is the vaccination documents of covid-19 go to the political of chile chile's government is a representative democratic republic whereby the president of chile is both head of statement and head of government and of a formal multi-party multi system, executive power is exercised by the president and their cabinet. The president of Chile is Mr. Gabriel Boric. There are two religions in Chile, which is Rom Roman Catholic and Christian Protestant. Let's go to the gastronomy of Chile. Number one in the list is pastel de choclo. The empanada. Pastel de Chocla is a Chilean national dish and one of the most representative of the cuisine. It refers to a type of corn pie made with a sweet corn or chocolate toppings covering a mixture of ground beef, chicken, black olives, onions, raisins, and hard boiled eggs. The second one is Empanada de Pino. Chili is favorite snack, appetizer, or street foods. While you can find empanadas in several South American countries, 
the recipes are different in each of them. In the case of Chile, the specialty of the empanada de pino, which by the way has nothing to do with the pine tree. The third one is pan batido con palta. This is very basic, simple dish. A slice of bread covered with mashed avocado and a hint of salt, nothing else. However, it comes high up on this list as this, this is a staple of Chilean diet. If you go to the custom and traditions in Chile. Customs in Chile are people have elevations in the evening. We all hear po added to the bridge virtually everywhere. Spices, spices are everywhere in Chile, even in sandwiches. Let's go to the television in Chile. This is the most important television in Chile, which is Fiestas Patrias, which they are celebrated by Independence Day or National Holiday. Most of the celebra celebrations occur around the 18 days and 19 and can last up to one, one full week. The great majority of the Chilean celebrate this enjoying barbecues eating traditional food like empanada or drinking chicha. They, they also usually go to the fondas. Here are the famous events and festival in the Chile. Their, their strong indigenous heritage is often blended into Catholic traditions, producing rich and meaningful celebration. He, here are the list of famous fe events or festivals in Chile. Number one is Tapati Festival. Tapati Festival. The Tapati Rapanui is an annual two weeks long festival held in the beginning of February in which two families compete in cultural competition all over the island such as music, sculpture, sports, body painting, fishing, and much more. Each of the each of the two families have representative, a queen candidate. Number two is Grape Harvest Festival. Grape Harvest Festival. This festival is called Vendimia. It usually takes place in March or April. And the festival season lasts several weeks. As it takes place each week in different town that produces wine. The third one is Dea de las Glorias Navales. Dea de las Glorias Navales, or also known as Navy Day in Chilean National Holiday. Literally Day of Naval Glory, celebrated on May 21st each year. The day was selected to commemorate the Battle of Iquique, which occurred on Wednesday, May 21, 1879, during the War of the Pacific. Let's go to the famous attractions in Chile. Here are the example of natural major attractions in Chile. Number one is Valle de la Luna. This scene is found in the driest non-polar desert in the world, the Atacama Desert. The cute village of San Pedro de Atacama has quite a feel about it, with all the buildings made of adobe and only one story high. Take a trip out to the Valle de, de la Luna and watch the incredible sunset, taking in the cruise of red and orange. Second one natural major attractions in Chile, Chile is Torres del Paine. This famous, this famous national park boasts plenty of hikes that offer some of the world's most magnificent views, with turquoise glacial lakes rug scenery and tower peaks it's really something you have to see with your own eyes the third most famous natural attractions in chile is bahaya in inglesa this tropical beach is located in the north of the country in the middle of the driest desert in the world bahaya inglesa is the is a cove of heavenly white sand and turkish waters enjoy this magical part of the coast by relaxing on the gently lapping oceans while pa pondering the strangeness of its location. Here are the famous man-made attractions in Chile. Number one is Palacio de la Moneda. Santiago's presidential palace is still the seat of government. 
Although no longer the president's home, this this is the building that Chilean Air Force fighters planes bombed during the 1973 military coup. Its court, court yards are open to the public. The second one famous man-made attractions in Chile is the Church of Kilo. Notable for their unusual wooden architecture, these churches often stand alone by the sea where they were built by the Jesuit missionaries during the colonial period. Some of them have, have been listed as World Heritage Sites. That's all about Chile. Thank you for listening. Good day everyone! I am Maria Ronilin Leonardo and for today, I will be reporting the country of Colombia. Colombia, a country of northwestern South America and its 100 miles of coast to the north are abutted by the waters of the Caribbean Sea. And its, 100 ma and its 800 miles of coast to the west are washed by the Pacific Ocean. Colombia is bordered by Panama, which divides into two bodies of water. On the northwest, by Venezuela and Brazil on the east, and by Peru and Ecuador on the south. Next is the demographic. The current population of Colombia is 51,712,979 as of Tuesday, March 22, 2022. And language na Manila is 99.5% of Colombians can speak the Spanish language. And yung mga natitira sa 99.5% ay mga English speakers and other languages na po iyon. Also, ethnic groups sa Colombia ay mga mestizo, white European Colombian, African Colombian, mulato, palenquero, or rezal, native South American, and other ethnicity. So, sa education system naman po nila, about sa education, Ang elementary school nila ay nagko-comprise ito into 5 years of formal education. Tapos ang mga bata mag e enroll are usually 5 years old and above. Ang secondary and fourth education nila is divided into basic secondary, so grade 6 to grade 9. Then, ang mid-secondary is grade 10 to grade 11. Tapos po, ang upper second education po nila usually nasa age of 15 to 16 years old. University education or college sa atin ay divided into undergraduate degrees and postgraduate degrees. Most of the university degrees are five years long. And health, the pop, health of the populace, Colombia has a declining fertility rate and an aging population with a predominantly urban distribu distribution. Fertility and birth rates have decreased while life expectancy, expectancy has increased from 68 to 74 years old. Next is required travel documents for Filipino travelers. So, para naman po sa mga Pilipino na gusto mag-travel sa Colombia, lahat po ng Philippine citizens ay pwede pumunta dito dahil, sa, dahil ang Colombia ay free visa for 90 days hanggang 180 days or ito po ay Six, I three to six months of stay in Colombia without visa. Um, ang mga kailangan lang po na documents para makapunta ay health document negative COVID-19 PCR test result. Required po ito sa lahat ng travelers na pupunta sa Colombia. And dapat po yung negative test result nila ay naka-issued into within 72, 72 hours before sila mag-departure. Next is vaccination document COVID-19. Uh, vaccination for, for travelers coming to Colombia and the last dose of vaccine po must be taken at least 14 days before departure. Also, original passport or travel document and return ticket for tourists. And visa nga po ay free dahil free po ang visa sa Colombia. Also, politician po tayo. So, politics. Ivan Duque Marquez is the president of Colombia since August 7, 2018. Isa siyang politician and lawyer na na-elect as a candidate from the Democratic Party in the 2018 presidential election. And Marta Lucia Ramirez Blanco is their vice president and Colombian lawyer and politician. Katulad din po siya ng president na na-elect and the current president. 
and Marta Lucia Mirias Blanco is the vice president become the first woman elected to serve the Colombia and religion so ayun po sa ayun po sa site na nakuha ko Colombian does not have a officially official religion pero ayun po sa mga survey 90% po approximately of Colombias ay mga Christians next is gastronomy in Colombian food there's a rich mix of Spanish and indigenous ingredients which which is African, Arab, and Spanish preparation. Also, the principal ingredients in Colombia gastronomies are pork, potatoes, beans, corn, chicken, rice, and soup. And some of most typical Colombia's Colombian plates you should try are adiaho. Um, mahilo niyo po sa picture para siyang uh, tinola sa atin. Soup siya made by chicken and isa din po ito sa specialty sa Colombia. Next is lechona. Um, sa atin, lechon lang po ito. Ang mga laman niya lang ay pork and rice na may pag uh, uh, may iba pa siyang halo na beans. Like that. Next is bandeja, bandeja paisa. Nakita niyo po dito sa picture meron siyang beans eggs, meat, rice, sausage, basta po halo-halo. Para siyang breakfast meal pero mayaman na Colombian version. And lastly is sancochos. Um, sancochos, para sa atin, mukha siyang bulalo dito sa Pilipinas. Then, yung soup na ito, may mga iba't iba siyang version like pork soup, um, chicken soup, and beef soup. Next is customs and traditions. So, sa Colombia, nakasanay na po nila tuwing New Year, kakain sila ng 12 grapes at midnight. Kasi sa kanila, pag kumain ka doon na po yun, parang suswertehin ka sa, sa taon na yun. Parang sa atin din. Um, polite gesture to bring cakes, traditional breads, and desserts to the host when visiting for the first time. And gifts are not usually opened in front of the person who gave them. Then, lastly, avoid slamming a car or a house doors. Next is famous events and festivals. Uh, the Carnival of Barranquilla is the second largest carnival in the world after the one in Rio de Janeiro. At isa rin to sa mga kilalang street events or festival sa Colombia na talagang dinarayo po ng mga tourists. Next is the, the Pera de las Flores or the Flower Festival in Colombia is another incredible festival in Colombia na ginaganap siya sa Medellin, Antioquia sa Colombia. This festival happens every year during the first two weeks of August and lasts around 10 days. And lastly, Black and White Carnival. Ito po ay isang largest carnival celebration in southern Colombia and one of the most oldest festival na ginaganap po sa Colombia. Um, this festival is showcasing their cultural exhibit of different races in South America. So this uh, this carnival happens in the city of Pasto from 2nd to 7th of January of each year or every year. Ito naman po tayo sa major natural attraction sa Colombia. First picture po, may kita nyo po dito is Tayrona National Nature Park. Kilala po ito bilang palm shaded coves and crystal clear coastal lagoons po dahil, sa, dahil din po sa tubig na napaka clear na may kita nyo po sa picture na pinapakita ko sa screen. Next is Caño Cristales or kilala bilang river of the five colors at the most beautiful river in the world. Dahil may kita nyo naman din po sa picture na yung, yung mga tubig po dito ay very clear. Na tipo may kita nyo na po yung pinakailalim nung, nung river. Yung mga colors po, ayan. And bumabagsak po yung mga tubig sa mga bato. Also, mas nagiging visible po yung water nito during wet and dry season. And yun ay kita nyo nga po na colors, yung red, uh, yung red and yung green. Um, isa po yung type ng plant na tinatawag po na Macarena clavigera. Lastly is Crab Cay or Cayo Cancrejo. is a small island of Isla de Provencia dahil 
sa crystal clear na tubig, masikat ito sa mga activities na snorkeling at diving. Dito naman po tayo sa man-made attraction sa Colombia. First attraction po natin is the Cathedral de Sal de Sipaquira. Isa po itong underground Roman Catholic Church na ginawa within the tunnels of Salt Mine. Bali 200 meters underground po ito in a hollowed mountain near the city of the Sipagira in Colombia. Next attraction po is the Cartagena's Old Town. One of the most popular tourist attraction na may kita po natin sa Colombia. Dahil na rin po sa historic old town sa Cartagena, this city was the first Spanish settlements in Colombia. Then, Old Old Town din po ito, which is also known as the Cuidad Amorolada, contains several old neighborhoods and land landmarks na may kita nyo rin po. Lastly, but not the least, is the Santuario de las Lajas, one of the most fascinating and religious structures in all churches dito sa Colombia. Uh, may hita niyo po sa picture na may bridge po ito na madadaanan bago makarating sa pinaka-church at may river po ito na tinatawag po na Guay River or Guaytara River. Um, the Santuario de las Lajas Church para po itong isang castle sa mga movies or mga barbies pang fairy tale po ang datingan na structure po nito pero Pag una nyo po itong makita, para hindi siya church, pero sa totoo po talaga ay isa po itong church na may kita nyo lang po sa Colombia. Ayun lamang po, thank you for listening and sana may natutunan po kayo sa aking uh, report. Thank you! Good day everyone, I am Kamea Feitilieno and today I will be going to discuss another country in South America which is the Argentina. Argentina. So here are the topics to be discussed. First is the geographic location, followed by demographic profile, required travel documents, political, religion, gastronomy, customs and traditions, and the major attractions. First thing to discuss is the geographical location. Argentina is a vast country located in the southern part of South America. It is also the 8th largest country in the world, being the 2nd largest country in South America after Brazil. Argentina is also about 1 third of the size of the United States. Argentina is bordered by the Andes Mountains and Chile to the west, the Andes, the North, the Pampas, and the Patagonia. Next is the demographics. The current population of Argentina is 45,939,873 as of Wednesday, April 20, 2022, based on Worldometer elaboration of the latest United Nations data. Argentina 2020 population is estimated at 45,195,774 people at mid-year according to UN data. Argentina population is equivalent to 0.58% of the total world population. The country also ranks number 32 in the list of countries by population. So in terms of population, rank number 32 ang Argentina. It also has the population density of 17 per square kilometers. The total land area is 2,736,690 square kilometers, 92.8% of population is urban, and the median age in Argentina is 31.5 years. Now, here are the required travel documents for the people who would want to visit Argentina, especially the people who are tourist visa holder. These are the must-haves. First is the valid passport. So your valid Philippine passport must still be good for up to 6 months from your date of arrival in Argentina. So pinaka-common na to, passport ang pinaka-kailangan natin when it comes to traveling, especially outside the country. Next is the USB to our Shenzhen visa. To get an ETA or AVE, you will need to either have a USB to visa or a Shenzhen visa. Next is the accommodation information. Travel authorities of Argentina want to know you have a place to stay and can subsist in the country. So, in traveling to Argentina, it is a must to have your own accommodation. 
So, dapat alam ng immigration, yung accommodation mo going to Argentina, kung alam ba nila na makakasurvive ka during your stay in the country. Next is the travel itinerary. Have your travel plans, including when you will leave Argentina, ready to show immigration officers. Next is the payment method. You will need either a credit or debit card or a PayPal account to complete the process. Argentina is a federal republic composed of 23 autonomous provinces plus the autonomous capital city of Buenos Aires. It is an electoral democracy with universal adult suffrage, a presidential system of government and separation of powers. Executive power is vested in the President of the Republic, legislative power in the Bicameral National Congress, and judicial power in the nation's judiciary, headed by the Supreme Court of Justice. Provinces are headed by a governor and have their own legislatures and provincial courts. Argentina is a vibrant representative democracy with competitive elections, lively media and civil society sectors, and unfettered public debate. Economic instability, corruption in the government and judiciary, and drug-related violence are among the country's most serious challenges. So just like any other democratic countries, sa Argentina, um, nagkakaroon sila ng power to vote kung sino yung mga gusto nilang maging president, kung sino yung gusto nilang mag-lead sa kanila sa country, and yung mga tao is mayroong freedom of speech. May freedom sila sa kung ano yung gusto nilang sabihin, sa kung ano yung gusto nilang maging opinion. President Alberto Angel Fernandez. So he is the current president of Argentina. He is also the chief of state, head of government, and an Argentine politician and lawyer who became president of Argentina in 2020. So Argentina's government name is Argentine Republic. And the government type is Republic. Now we move on to religion. Religion has played a significant role in social and political life throughout Argentinian history. Roman Catholicism is particularly culturally pervasive and continues to be the official religion of the state. Approximately 92% of the population identifies as Roman Catholic, however less than 20% are actively practicing. Roman Catholicism is the official religion of the state. Freedom of religious choice is protected under that Argentine constitution. Various religious groups in the country are 2% identify as Protestant, 2% identify as Jewish, making the Jewish population in Argentina the largest in Latin America, and 4% identify with some other religion. So when it comes to the Argentina's cuisine, nagkaroon na rin ng iba't ibang influensya from European countries like Italy and Spain. Here are some of the famous cuisine in Argentina. Chimichurri, Provoleta, Dulce de Leche, Asado, Alfajores, Matambre Arrollado, Yerba Mate, and Malbec. So first here is the Asado. It refers to both barbecued meats and the social events centered around them. The asado takes its origin from the Spanish word asar, meaning to grill. In other words, the asado is a barbecue in the manner of Argentina. The term is used to refer to the dish itself but also to allude its preparation technique. Most of the time, the asado is made from vacuno or beef. So, kung dito sa atin sa Philippines, ang mga barbecue is nasa stick, sa Argentina is hindi. And most of the time, beef yung binabarbecue nila or yung ginagawa nilang asado. Next is the dulce de leche. Cows roaming Argentina's expansive grasslands have not only provided the country with phenomenal beef, but also dairy. Also, it is from condensed milk that Argentina gets one of its culinary treasures, dulce de leche. Loosely translated as milk jam, this thick caramel is the result of condensed milk being slowly reduced until sweetened and sticky. So, dulce de leche is made from the dairy products specifically from condensed milk. Next thing is the Argentine Malbec. Argentina is a burgeoning source of world-class wines, specifically Malbec, which boasts a spicy berry-based flavor due to the smaller grapes that grow in tight clusters. Although Malbec originated in France, it's more likely to be associated with Argentina, the country that produces the lion's share of the world's Malbec 
and it's credited when it's resurging popularity. So Malbec is hindi originally from Argentina but in France. Pero dahil nga sa parang yung pinaka main ingredient ng wine na to is more associated in Argentina, mas nagiging kilala siya from Argentina. Next is the chimichurri. Chimichurri is a zesty green sauce made with fresh herbs, garlic, vinegar, chili pepper, and olive oil that leavens up pretty much anything you throw at it. This tangy, garlicky salsa is sometimes used as a marinade, though most often it's found blanketing grilled meats and heaps of other savory foods throughout the country. So chimichurri, um, isang sauce siya, and pinakasawsawan lang siya, pero dahil nga sa flavor niya na medyo maanghang and maraming herbs, nagiging masarap siya kahit sauce lang siya. And pwede mo siyang bagayan, pwede mo siyang dagdaga ng ingredients na kung depende sa gusto mo or sa pandasa mo. Next is provoleta. Argentinians give whole new meaning to grilled cheese with their trademark dish of provoleta. A consequence of the significant Italian immigration to Argentina, provoleta is the country's variant on provolone. So provolone is an Italian cheese. So it is made of um, grilled cheese, which is provolone. So trademark siya ng provoleta yung Italian cheese niyo. Next is the alfajores. Argentina is said to be the world's largest consumer of alfajores, crumbly shortbread-like biscuits, sandwiching jams, mousses, or dulce de leche. Alfajores roots lie in the Arab world, brought to southern Spain by the Moors. Spaniards later carried the sweets to Argentina. Next is the matambre arrollado. This super slim cut of beef, like a flank steak, is thinly sliced and stuffed with vegetables, hard-boiled eggs, herbs, and olives. The meat is rolled around the filling, then boiled, baked, or grilled. Matambre translates literally to hunger killer and arrollado as to roll up. The story goes that these are often the first meats ready on the grill, staving off hunger while waiting for the rest of the asado to catch up. Next one is the yerba mate. It was indigenous populations in South America that first used and cultivated yerba mate prior to European colonization. Drinking yerba mate is a social practice, and the gourd fitted with a metal straw that doubles as a sieve is often passed around the group, each person sipping before passing. Next is the Argentine customs and tradition. Argentina's culture and traditions are a unique blend of Latin American indigenous traditions and European customs. While Spain gained an early foothold in the country, Italian immigration in the 19th century added a Mediterranean flair to the culture and especially the cuisine. So in terms of customs and traditions, just like the gastronomy or the Argentina's cuisine, um, nagkakaroon na rin ng iba't ibang influensya from European countries like Spain. So for the traditional clothing, we have cowboy costume, alpargatas, and wide brimmed hats. Cowboy costume worn by gochos and woolen ponchos in a wide variety of colors and patterns. Next is the alpargatas, traditional footwear which are durable shoes made from colorful pattern canvas with rope or rubber soles. Next is the Argentinians are also fond of wide brimmed hats to protect their face and eyes from sunlight. So here are the actual pictures of the traditional clothing in Argentina, the cowboy costume, alpargatas, and white brim hat. First tradition is the great with kiss. Argentines are incredibly affectionate people. And although in most Latin American or European countries, it is very common to say hello with a kiss. For some cultures, this can be strange. You might be surprised when men greet each other with kisses too. It doesn't matter if it is your friend, your brother, or a stranger. Argentines have this unique way of greeting. Once you arrive in the country, you will realize the effusive way in which they greet each other in Argentina. So, sa Argentina, normal na tradition na ng mga tao yung way of greeting nila na you say hello and then kiss kahit na lalaki sa lalaki or babae sa babae. Next is the share made a sacred ritual. Every Argentine in any part of the world carries his mate and his thermos. This drink is indispensable in the lives of Argentines. However, what makes this one of the most unique Argentine customs is how mate is taken. Although you can take it alone, the common thing is that mate is shared among friends. 
Therefore, it is very common to see a group of friends sitting sharing the drink from the same thermos mug and passing the mate around. So in this ritual, ito yung yerba mate in the gastronomy ng Argentina. So may isang group of friends na may casual talk, either politics, either um, random talk lang. Meron silang um, pinapasa or pinapaikot sa isa't isa. Next is talking about politics. The sharing of the maid goes hand in hand with another of the Argentine traditions par excellence, always talking about politics. So although it is usually an issue that generates conflicts, Argentines are experts in always talking about politics. No matter the time or place, an Argentine will often want to talk about these important issues. In relation to the previous ritual, um, talking about politics, ang um, pinaka-tradisyon na ng mga tao sa Argentina na yun yung magiging topic nila once na magka-usap sila. Parang hindi na bago yung topic na politics when it comes to catching up. Next is dance the tango. Tango is perhaps Argentina's most famous cultural contribution to the world stage and few visitors to the country escape its display filled as it is with drama and seduction. Infused with passion and marked by sultry movements, the sophisticated tango is said to have been birthed by immigrants who invented it as an attempt to dance their loneliness away. Tango is the biggest contribution of Argentina to the world. This dance is originated in Argentina wherein there are two people dancing, a boy and a girl, in a form of drama and seduction. Next is get into football. In Argentina, football aka soccer is more than mere sport. It's practically a religion. Argentines are passionate about their teams and players, and until we've watched the game amidst the sea of chanting and stomping revelers, rocket flares flying overhead, and banners swaying in the wind, you haven't understood the true meaning of a sports fanatic. After all, it was this fervor that gave birth to such Argentinian soccer legends as Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi, considered to be among the sports all-time greats. So, sa mga taga-Argentina, hindi lang basta-basta sports ang football sa kanila. Parang ito na yung nagiging pride nila. Ito yung parang duty nila na mag-cheer sa mga football players ng country nila. Especially when it comes to competing outside the country. Next tradition is channel your inner gocho. Traditional and rugged, gocho culture is born and bred in the Pampas as a unique mix of European and indigenous traditions. It best reveals itself in quintessential Argentinian cowboy towns like San Antonio de Arroyo, which hosts an annual gocho festival each fall. Much of Argentina's score is defined by its sweeping pampas, a landscape of vast plains that comes pockmarked by charming old towns and sprawling ranches. Next is try your hand at polo. Football may reign supreme, but polo is also incredibly popular here with Argentinian teams often coming out on top in international polo competitions. In fact, the country has turned out some of the world's best players including Adolfo Cambiaso, who is widely referred as polo's best ever sportsman. Next is major attractions. We have man-made attractions and natural attractions. The natural attraction is the Perito Moreno Glacier. The main hub for tourists visiting the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Patagonia's Los Glaciers National Park, the small town of El Calafate offers plenty of accommodation options and other amenities for visitors. It is here that most visitors join excursions to see the park's popular glaciers, most notably the stunning Perito Moreno Glacier, a massive 30-kilometer-long ice formation just 78 kilometers from the town center. Third natural attraction in Argentina is the Puerto Madryn and the Valdez Peninsula. The city of Puerto Madryn lies on the shores of Golfo Nuevo in one of the most sheltered places on the Patagonian coast. Founded by Welsh settlers in 1886, the city's deep water port and abundant nature reserves make it one of the most popular cruise destinations in Argentina. Its rugged coastline attracts water sports enthusiasts, particularly windsurfers who enjoy defying the strong Patagonian winds. Nature lovers find plenty of things to do on the Valdez Peninsula, an important nature reserve listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its diverse wildlife. Next is the man-made attractions. First, 
Recoleta, La Boca, and Tango in Buenos Aires. It is one of the South America's most attractive cities. Buenos Aires is often the first glimpse of Argentina most visitors will have before heading off to popular tourist destinations such as Patagonia. Buenos, Aire, Buenos Aires' most colorful neighborhood and home to the quirky Caminita Street Museum, a splendid pedestrian zone and open-air museum popular for its brightly painted houses, amusing sculptures, cafes, music, and tango dancers in the streets. Second man-made attraction is the Recoleta Cemetery. The cemetery is one of the most unusual places for tourists to visit, but it attracts attention due to its beauty and is one of the most popular places to visit in Argentina. This is not an ordinary cemetery, as it is under the protection of UNESCO. The most interesting is the impressive headstones. There are a large number of monuments and crypts on the territory of the cemetery. Walking through the many pavements of the cemetery, you can see medieval crypts decorated with beautiful statues and bizarre patterns. Third man-made attraction is the historic Cordoba Cathedral. A splendid mix of Baroque and neoclassical styles that can trace its roots back to the original Roman Catholic Church built here in 1580. Highlights of the structure, much of which dates from the 18th century, include an ornate interior with exquisite 20th century frescoes and murals painted by leading Argentinian artist Emilio Carafa, a native of Cordoba. Good day everyone! I'm Sofia Nicole Menor from BSTM1B and today I'm going to discuss and present the country of Peru in South America. Welcome to Peru, the land of the Incas, capital of Lima. The permanent national flag is of a vertical tri-band design with red outer bands and a single white middle band. The color red represents bloodshed for independence. White symbolizes purity and peace. The colors are believed to symbolize the lasting impact the Incas have had in the country. Sa so flag ng Peru, yung red is nag represent ng bloodshed para sa kalayaan and yung white naman is nagsisimbolo ng kalinisan at kapayapaan. At ang mga kulay ay pinaniniwala ang sumisimbolo sa pangmatagalang epekto ng mga Inca sa bansa. Geographic Location Peru is located in the western part of South America, just below the equator. It has a varied topography that consists of a coastal plain in the west High Rug Mountains in its center, the Andes, and a lowland jungle in the east that leads into the Amazon River Basin. Ang Peru ay matatagpuan sa kalurang bahagi ng Timog America sa ibaba lamang ng Ecuador. Ito ay may iba't ibang topografiya na binubuo ng isang coastal plain sa kanluran. Matataas na bundok sa gitna nito ang tinatawag na Andes at isang mababang gubat sa silangan na humahantong sa Amazon River Basin. Peru is essentially a tropical country with its northern tip nearly touching the equator. Despite its tropical location, a great diversity of climates, ways of life, and economic activities is brought about by the extremes of elevation and by the southwest winds that sweep in across the cold Peru current or Humboldt current which flows along its Pacific shoreline. Sinasabi na ang Peru ay mahalagang isang tropical na bansa, na ang hilagang dulo nito ay halos nakadikit sa equator. Sa kabila ng tropical na lokasyon nito, ang malaking pagkakaiba ng mga klima, paraan ng pamumuhay at mga aktividad na pang-ekonomiya ay dulot ng sukdula ng elevation at ng hanging timog kanluran na humahampas sa malamig na Peru Current o tinatawag na Humboldt Current na dumadaloy sa kahabaan ng Pasipiko nito. The immense difficulties of travel posed by the Andes have long impended national unity. Equitos on the upper Amazon lies only about 600 miles or 965 kilometers northeast of Lima. The capital, but before the airplane, travelers between the cities often chose a 7,000 mile or 11,250 kilometers trip via the Amazon, the Atlantic, and Caribbean 
the isthmus of Panama and the Pacific, rather than the shorter mountain route. Demographic Peru population is 33,598,618. Pangapat ang Peru sa kilalang lugar sa bansa ng South America. Language, Spanish, Quechua, Aymara. Ethnic groups, Native American, Mestizo, White European, Asian, Afro-Peruvian, Mulato, and Zambo. Economic status. Over the past decade, Peru has been one of the region's fastest growing economies with an average growth rate 5.9% in the context of low inflation, averaging 2.9%. The largest city in Peru is its capital city, Lima. It is home to more than a quarter of Peruvians and the country's largest city by far with a population of over 8 million. Additional large cities in Peru include Arequipa, Calo, and Churu Hill. The city of Lima proper is, according to 2016 estimates, home to 8,852,000 8, people. This makes it the 28th largest in the world, equivalent more or less to London. Ang Lima ay ang capital ng Peru ay ang pinakamalaking metropolis ng bansa. Sa populasyon na higit 8 million, ito ang pinakamalaking metropolis ng bansa at tahanan ng higit sa isang kapat na mga Peruvian. Ang Arequipa, Calo at Drew Hill ay ito ang tatlong pangunahing lungsod sa Peru. Ayon sa pagdatansya noong 2016, ang lungsod ng Lima ay may populasyon na 8 million 852,000 na naninirahan. Ilalagay ito bilang ika-20 na pinakamalaking lungsod sa mundo na halos katulad ng London. Education System The education system of Peru is somewhat similar to the United States and it has basic education ages 3 to 5 years old. Halos magkaparehas lang yung education system sa United States and Peru. And merong primary ages 6 to 11 years old, secondary ages 12 to 16 years old, all of which are free and meron din silang um, libreng education doon. Mandatory yung pag-aaral nila doon from ages 6 to 16 years old. Health of Populance Peru has a decentralized healthcare system administered by five entities. The Ministry of Health which provide health services for 60% of the population, as Salud, which provides for 30% of the population, and the Armed Force, National Police, and the private sector together provide services to the remaining 10%. The resulting system contains multiple providers of services and insurance often performing functions with a high degree of overlap and little coordination. Health workers often work several jobs in multiple subsectors. Ang pangangalaga daw sa kalusugan ng Peru ay decentralizado. Ang ministry ng kalusugan ay isa sa limang katawa na mamahala sa sistema na nagsisilbi na 60% ng populasyon na may mga servisyong pangkalusugan. 30% ng populasyon ay pinaglilingkuran ng esalud at ang sandatahang lakas na titirang 10% ng populasyon ay pinaglilingkuran ng pribadong sektor. As of 2011, human resources in health bilang result ay mayroong iba't ibang mga service provider sa system at insurance na marami sa mga tungkulin nito ay nangangailangan ng mataas na antas ng kada lubhasaan. Maraming overlap at walang gaanong koordinasyon. Ang mga manggagawa sa larangan ng pangangalagang pangkalusugan ay madalas na nagtrabaho sa iba't ibang industriya. Required travel documents, passport valid for 6 months, visa free, health document, PCR test, negative result. So, ang required um, for travel documents is passport na valid for 6 months and hindi mo na kailangan mag-apply ng visa kasi which is visa free ang meron sa Peru and health document na kailangan is negative result yung PCR test. Political President Pedro Castillo, Vice President Dina Bolwarte. 
The politics of the Republic of Peru takes place in a framework of unitary, semi-presidential representative democratic pub republic, whereby the President of Peru is both head of state and head government and of pluriform multi-party system. Executive power is exercised by the President and the government. So, ang politika ng Republika ng Peru ay nagaganap sa isang balangkas ng isang unitary semi-presidential representative na demokratikong republika, kung saan ang pangulo ng Peru ay parehong pinuno ng estado at pinuno ng pamahalaan at ng isang pluriform na multi-party na sistema. Ang kapangyarihang tagapagpaganap ay ginagamit ng pangulo at ng pamahalaan. Religion Roman Catholic, 76.03% Gastronomy The four traditional staples of Peruvian cuisine are corn, potatoes, and other tubers. A marantesis, quinoa, caniwa, and kiwicha. And legumes, beans, and lupins. Staples brought by the Spanish include rice, wheat, and meats, beef, pork, and chicken. So, ang mga potatoes daw ay nagmula sa lugar na Peru and meron daw 4,000 varieties or iba't ibang klase ang meron nito like colors and shapes ng potatoes. And ang Peru daw ay ang pinaka ay may pinakamalaking quinoa and maka producer ang lugar na yon. Quinoa is rich in both fiber and protein, contains a much higher amount of other nutrients and has a similar fluffy texture to the rice. So yung quinoa is um Similar siya, katulad siya ng, ano, ng kanin, yung texture niya. Also, they produce the world's most expensive coffee kawai tea, dong coffee, which is made from the partially fermented coffee beans. Customs and Traditions Peruvian Culture and Tradition Peruvian culture is a beautiful mix of Hispanic and Native traditions. The Quechua and Aymara are the two main native cultures of Peru, both of whom speak their native languages. These Inca descendants have successfully preserved and developed their proud cultures despite the creeping in of globalization. Ang kultura daw ng Peru ay isang magandang halo ng Hispanic at um, katutubo. Ang Quechua at Aymara ay dalawang pangunayang katutubong sibilisasyon ng Peru na parehong nagsasalita ng sariling mga wika. Sa kabila ng pagapang ng globalisasyon, matagumpay na napanatili at napangalagaan ng mga inapo ng Inca na ito ang kanilang natatanging kultura. Makikita nyo dito sa picture is yung naka-arrow na um, suot nila na sombrero Kasi ang mga yan ay babaeng mga Quechua. And yung mga kasal na babaeng Quechua ay nagsusuot ng um, woven hats na tinatawag nila. Ibig sabihin kasi kasal na sila. And yung mga single naman na babaeng Quechua ay nagsusuot ng knitted na um, hats. And nagsisimbolo yung mga suot nila kung para ma-identify kung single ba sila or kasal na sila. Famous Festivals in Peru Inti Raimi the Inti Raimi means Sun Festival in Quechua. This is one of the most important celebrations of the Imperial Cusco and one of the most thrilling festival in the entire country. Second one is QOY Luriti. The QOY Luriti, which in Quechua means Snow Star, is a religious festival that is celebrated in Cusco 58 days after Easter of the Holy Week and just a few days before Corpus Christi, so its date varies from year to year. Third and last famous festival is Corpus Christi. The Feast of Corpus Christi used to be celebrated widely all over the country, but the most known popular celebration is located in the impressive city of Cusco. Major attractions in Peru, Natural, Machu Picchu, second, Colca Canyon, third is Sacred Valley. Major attractions, man-made, Miraflores District of Lima, Historic District of Lima, and last is the White City located in Arequipa. So that's all. Thank you for listening and watching. I hope you learned something from what I've discussed. Again, I'm Sophia Nicole Menor from BSTM1B.